Rebel Force Radio presents Experimental Unit Clone Force 99. The defective clones with the uh, desirable mutations. They call themselves the Bad Batch. The Bad Batch. This is the Bad Batch. After Show. After Show. You think it's too much to ask uh, the clones if they could all kindly wear name tags? I, I, I need more. I need more than their subtle helmet decorations and various versions of a buzz cut to tell them apart, especially now. It's great to hear these names, but uh, it's getting hard to tell these guys apart for me. I mean, this was like a clone trooper reunion. You got Wolf, you got Rex, you got Greer, you got Fireball, and Hauser, and Samson, and uh, so many clones. So many clones uh, coming under Rex's, I, I don't know, clone rebellion? What is it? And we've, we've got the clone rebellion going on. We've also got a couple of uh, regular humans, I guess, humans, humanoids, Chuchi and Singh, and they're having this clandestine meeting together and the seeds of the rebellion are being planted there. There's just rebellion everywhere, but uh, action packed episodes, of course, two, it's a, it's a, it's a double batch of bad batch. And of course, a double batch of the bad batch after show here from rebel force radio. Thank you all for joining us so much. Always great to have you here live as we broadcast on YouTube, the bad batch after show we're coming uh, on Thursday. Cause we had a double feature and we do these double features or triple features. We need a little extra time. And so we do the shows on Thursdays at 9 o'clock Eastern time. If it's a single episode drop, we're on Wednesday. So that's the schedule. But we know that uh, many, many, many of you are listening on podcasts. So thank you for that as well. Anyway, you're going to join us. We are appreciative of it here. So we got a lot to break down. So let's get to it. I know someone else who's always appreciative when you drop by and listen. And that's, of course, my good friend and yours from Chicago, Jimmy Mack. Hey, Jason. Hey, Star Wars fans. Uh, really, really excited to talk Bad Batch with everyone this week. These uh, episodes have uh, some great clone interaction. Jason just did the rundown of the whole list of all the clone names. It was a, it was a clone trooper reunion. It really was. And there was also some good clone trooper-esque drama going on throughout the whole thing. Um, you know, it was the most exciting uh Experience I've had with Fireball since uh, that frat party I went to back in 1988. <laughs> uh, that's a, a reference to the shot that some people uh, like to enjoy. And uh, I had a Fireball recently for some reason. I think it was a, a tribute to a friend or something. Uh, fireball. So uh, I'm I'm not gooped up on Fireball tonight. Although now that I'm talking about it so much, I kind of <laughs> wish I I did bring it along some for the uh, conversation. But it's all we're I not can talking. think of right now. So thanks for planting <laughs> that seed. I'm sitting here with my with, with, with Kool Aid. I mean, what is wrong with me? And now you're talking Ooh. Fireball. Oh, my Jason God. Swank. There's Swank always drinking the Kool Aid. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's right. But these are really enjoyable episodes. Lots of great callbacks to earlier episodes of The Bad Batch and uh, even The Clone Wars. Some great callbacks to that via character situations and environments. So I'm really yeah. looking forward to talking about these two episodes. Yes, yes, yes. But it does move the central story of The Bad Batch forward. And that's what we're really looking out for this season. We want to make sure that the momentum and the energy of the season continues and I would say, Jim, we're at seven episodes in. We'll do the tail of the tape here in just a minute. But I think the momentum has been consistent. I don't feel like we've really had to go through much filler. I think they're on a mission this season. It's the final season. So I don't think when you've got that final season uh, moniker going and following you that you really have room or time for filler. Yeah, and you can feel it ramping up. You can feel the intensity ramping up. You can feel the urgency ramping up, especially with the way this particular episode ended. There, you know, it, it's like these dominoes are falling from episode to episode and it, it's all connecting together really nicely to what I hope is going to be a really awesome conclusion to the series. 
All right. Well, let's uh, do the tail of the tape. We're talking about two different episodes here. Episode six, Infiltration, directed by Stuart Lee and written by Brad Rao. Story editor, as always, Matt Miknovitz. Running time at about uh, just a little over 24 minutes. Uh, and then we've got episode seven, Extraction. Oh, give me dentist flashbacks. <laughs> oh, you're going to need an extraction. Uh, directed by Saul Ruiz. Uh, double bill on the on the writers here. we got Jennifer Corbett and Matt Miknovitz. And mm -hmm. Matt, of course, uh, story editor. And both of these episodes debuted on Disney+. Plus. For those of you listening into the future, on March 13th, 2019. 24. Um, so, Jim, the first uh, episode kicks off with this clandestine meeting between uh, Senator Rayo Chuchi from Pantora. I believe they're actually on Pantora, and she's yes. meeting with uh, Senator Singh. And we've seen Senator Singh before. He goes back to, I think, season one. There was a, a, a rescue, I believe, that the batch had to do with uh, Senator Singh. It was one of those missions from Sid. Yeah. And um, so but not a not a not a main not a main character by by any stretch. But yeah, but his mustache <laughs> is exceptional. I'll tell you what he commits, man. He commits to that stash. And uh, yeah, he <laughs> uh, he's a very interesting and unique uh, character uh, with the big stash, the monocle. And it's like, a, I don't know, like a. World War One era German hat, you know, he looks like he's, he should be like Kaiser Bill or something <laughs> should be his name. But um, he he's the senator from Raxus. And Raxus is a separatist uh, planet, separatist yes. system. Pantora was loyalist and they were uh, with the with the uh, with the Republic. And here you've got these two coming together. They were once sworn enemies and now they're unified amongst a common enemy. And one of the thoughts that I had as I was sitting there, and I know that it's hard to say if there was a right side and a wrong side when you look at the Rebe the Republican, the separatists, because Palpatine was pulling the strings on both sides. So it's hard to say if, if any side had sort of any kind of moral superiority. But I got to think that, you know... <laughs> I'm starting to feel like a separatist because these these folks have always been for independence, uh, getting out from under the thumb of a bloated, bureaucratic, corrupt regime, and nothing's really changed for them. But for the republic, a lot's changed. Yes, yes, and and despite uh, there's no line being drawn between republic and separatist anymore. It's um, it's it's made things more confusing, really. It's not as black and white. And, uh, you know, they discuss this so much because uh, the the emperor does have the support of the overall population of the galaxy. They find the empire to be a breath of fresh air compared to what was going down during the clone. The War. trains are running on time. Yes. <laughs> Under the empire. And so... Um, so uh, Singh, um, Avi Singh, he has a meeting with Ryo Chuchi, who goes back to the Clone Wars. Mm. Uh, we saw her in those uh, episodes with um, oh, those those furry guys who the, one of them was in the cantina. The, uh, the, the, oh, it's right at the tip of my tongue what those guys are. Um, you know what I'm talking about. You had uh, you had. The guy and Cobby, and they were sold as a two pack by Hasbro. Oh. His, come on, the big furry I'm, guy with the one. Let's tooth. see. This, it's a live show. So if you're in the chat. Come on, uh, help uh, help Mac out. I'm. This guy, why am I even a brain freeze on this one for crying out loud? Um, but that that was the story that went bad. It'll uh, come in here. Yeah, it'll come in here right after we go past this conversation. This oh yeah, part yeah, of the yeah. It'll it'll be ten, it'll oh, the tall, the tall. Thank you, John Riley. Talls, talls, talls. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for All the right. assist there. Forget, forget that. Um, but <laughs> Ryo Chuchi, um, yes, uh, her her planet was at war with the talls in uh, Anakin and Obi Wan went to go and uh, lead some clone troopers in that battle. And that was during the Clone Wars. Then, of course, she's been a presence in the Bad Batch. Um, Fighting you know, for clones' rights yes, in the Senate. Right. Yeah. 
And so naturally now she's a wanted person <laughs> and um, cause the umpire is looking to cut, you know, close her down for good. Um, her name, Ryo Chuchi, it's, it's a tribute to Ryan church who was a concept artist for star Wars going all the way back to the prequels. And uh, she says in the conversation with Avi Singh that the emperor is concerned with planets and systems uh, uniting against him. So he's trying to keep everything on the down low. And so it gives them a sense of confidence that they won't be just outright attacked. They, yeah. you know, she says something like the emperor won't strike out against us um, because he wants to maintain public approval. Yeah, he says he can't just strike out us, strike out at us openly. And, and she reminds and says, yeah, but such limitations haven't stopped them from occupying, or he says, uh, stop them from occupying planets, including my own. And he was, um, he had to be extracted from his own planet because he wouldn't uh, proclaim his loyalty to the Empire. So right. he's definitely and that's, one. That's in season one. Right. Um, so, yeah, so these two guys, you know, uh, the enemy against of my enemy is my friend, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. And so uh, they're working together as, uh, you know, um, early rebels in a way, you know, right. this is kind of birth of the rebellion sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think well, that, I, I couldn't help but think though, that Chuchi is kind of like a Mon Mothma type type character in this sense, her public face, like Mon Mothma has a public face as, as sort of this, you know, kind of like liberal do-gooder, uh, always uh, looking out for the underdog. In this case, Chuchi is fighting for clone rights. But then the private face is Mon Mothma. I wouldn't say she's ruthless, but she's willing to do what needs to be done. And we're going to see this evolution of her. You know, she's a, a ruthless revolutionary or is going to be a ruthless revolutionary. In the same way here, you got Chuchi, who in the cover of... Darkness is also out there trying to openly recruit systems into this rebellion before it's a, a rebellion. So I, I see a lot of similarities between these characters. So I think like there's a lot of, you know, there's going to be uh, a lot of different Mon Mothma types throughout the Senate. And Chuchi is, is, is one of them who wear different faces. Did I lose you? It, it seemed like, yeah, briefly, there was a little hiccup. Oh, all but... right. Well, we have some storms here uh, it's <laughs> right over top of the studio right now. So hopefully uh, it'll it'll stay with us. So F faith in the force. Yes, yes, yes. So, so Chuchi is still working out in the open, right? There's uh, Yeah, she's doing she's both. She's not like... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's so, not under... Yeah, I see... Got it. Okay. For for some reason, I thought that she was sort of in hiding, but I'm glad you're clearing that up. Yes, yeah, Singh seems to be the guy that's hiding. He's the yeah, one that's okay. being escorted around by undercover Rex, by the way. And I want that action figure. I would like undercover. to see undercover <laughs> undercover Rex with his uh, with his cloak. He's like, no one will recognize me <laughs> with this cloak on over my armor. <laughs> Some familiar about that guy. I, yeah. I can't quite place it though because of that cloak over his armor. It's like mm. when the Ninja Turtles would go out with like hats and overcoats. It's like, okay, pretty good disguise there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you're I don't know who you're fooling. Yeah, Clark Kent's glasses. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Uh but there's this assassin that shows up and ruins the 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 party, this this these clone X they're called. These clone yes. X, and this is, I think, um, I got a theory, and I hope it's not too soon to throw this theory out, but I wanted to Ooh. run it by you, because mm -hmm. there's all this suspicion about Crosshair and his connection to these these clone X assassins. You know, they yes. capture they capture this one, and they take him back to their. Uh, their 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 headquarters and this is on jim i saw in the the jedi council chat you confirmed that this is teth right this it is yes bomar this monk is monastery okay going all the way back to the clone wars motion picture the very first clone wars this is teth and it's up on that spire 
It's a Bomar monk monastery. It's up on a spire. And in the Clone Wars movie, they, you know, they, they repel up the, the spire. And oh my gosh, the yes, yes. Because okay, now I remember. This is where, um, if I remember correctly, this is where Asajj Ventress dropped off Stinky the Hut <laughs> after kidnapping him from <laughs> Jabba. And so, uh, yeah. And also, I mean, Teth also comes up in the uh, Expanded Universe book Master and Apprentice which features Obi-Wan and, and Qui-Gon going to Teth. And, uh, yeah, I, I can confirm it is Teth um, because the descriptive audio track does say, meanwhile, back on Teth. It's great. Oh, it's, it's almost like having a awesome. Ted Knight back on the Super Friends <laughs> as narrator. <laughs> meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. <laughs> that's meanwhile, at the Bomark Monastery on Teth. That's yeah, that so. that's that's awesome. See, this is what we do for you folks. We 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 read all of the uh the, the transcripts of the closed captions, where the the audio I've never listened to one of these audio descriptive tracks before. Yes, oh, that's great. available that's right there on Disney one. Plus, huh? Yes. Okay. You can uh, get to it via the um uh, the languages, I believe the mm, language okay. bar. What what really seals the deal though is when they show the Beaumont Monastery on Teth as the Bad Batch are flying in, same music cue that Kevin Kiner used in the film. He brings oh. it back. Yeah, he brings it back. <laughs> That's awesome. It's brief. It's it's just a little little taste of it, but it's there. Oh, that's really cool. Um, so here's so here's my theory because there's all this uh, speculation and uh, well. It, accusatory language that's being used when Crosshair finally shows up with the Bad Batch because they find out that this assassin, oh, they have the puck, uh, just like Mando has the puck, and they're looking right. and they see that uh, Omega is on this assassin's list. So they get the, the Batchers to come in, and um, what's 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 interesting is they, they, they start to fight. You know, Hauser is there, and Hauser does not trust uh, Crosshair at all. Right. And Rex is willing to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt because the whole team is is vouching for him. I mean, even Hunter now has accepted Crosshair back into the ranks. But Hauser, who has history with with Crosshair on what was that that planet that they were on when he uh was that on it wasn't on Coruscant when he got arrested. Oh, it was on us uh, um where Sindola was when Sindola was being uh uh they were the, the the empire was after uh, Chan Ryloth. Sindola on Ryloth, right? And uh, Hauser refused to give him up, and he got arrested by Crosshair. Mm -hmm. So definitely an axe to grind. So he's suspicious about how Crosshair seems to know about these assassin clones, these these clone exes, and Crosshair reveals that well, he knows so much because. He was almost one of them. He was going to be one of them. And, yeah, he says, if the program's so secretive, how do you know about it? Crosshair says, because they tried to make me into one of them. Tried? Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Being defective is in my nature. Mm. Um, okay. So here's my theory. When the second, when the, when the, when the first cross, or when the first clone X gets captured, there's a scene where another one is being activated. And he actually says, why am I being activated? Why have I been activated? And I think it's, uh, it's, I think it's the Republic Commando. Is it Scorch that says one of the operatives has gone dark? Mm -hmm. His internal homing device remains intact, so we know he's alive. So this whole idea of like being activated makes me wonder if these are sort of sleepers. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, a switch goes off, and boom. There I, was it was it the Bourne identity was it the Bourne movies one of these movies I remember sort of had this idea it's sort of the Manchurian candidate concept where you've been hypnotized or you've had some sort of uh, something you had your brain scrambled and all of a sudden a, 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 some sort of cue like Order sixty six actually mm -hmm. some yes. sort of cue happens and then you go into action so I'm wondering if it's possible that. Crosshair doesn't know 
but he actually is one of them. Maybe they Ooh. all consciously think that they tried to become one of these or that they tried to be, but they actually are. And so hmm. what a great insurance policy. Yeah, let Crosshair escape with, with uh, let, yeah, let Crosshair get close to the child. So if they would by any chance escape, they've always got this insurance policy. They can flip a switch and all of a sudden he is an assassin. But it's not about assassinating Omega. It's about capturing her and bringing her back. They keep saying they want her alive, yet this assassin has Omega on her puck. So, Well, it's the bad badge who refer to these Imperial shadow operatives as assassins. Yeah. They call them assassins because they probably just think these guys are hitmen, bounty hunters, whatever. So they call them assassins. But... I don't think they're assassins by nature. I think they do whatever they're told to do. Yeah, they, they, they're they multi-talented. They're triple threats. They can assassinate. They can kidnap. Yeah, uh, whatever you steal. need. steal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So it's a secret operation that, that reprograms the clones. It erases their identities and personalities. And then they undergo this conditioning to make them super soldiers right yes and super so and they come exactly. out after all this process they come out and they're different mm -hmm. um and it was tried on crosshair because it doesn't work because he says he's defective now is he talking about his individual pushback against the operation how he wouldn't mentally let himself be taken advantage of that way or is it because he's a modified clone in the first place like the other bad badgers and you just simply cannot reprogram them like that. That's what it's, I'm wondering. It's it's possible. It's possible. Another thing that I thought of is maybe his inability to become one of these is sort of telegraphed by this hand thing that he's got going on. Which, by the way, this is a, a shot from uh, an earlier episode. But this this hand thing, this hand check that he does... Um, I've got a shot of it from from this episode. Yeah, it's when he's shooting dark, at but, the shadow, right? That the clone X. Yeah, he looks at his hand and it's shaking. So I wonder if that is somehow a symptom of whatever it is that stopped him from being able to become one of these clone X troopers. But I'm not ruling out the fact that he actually is one, and that mm. that switch could flip. As uh, someone said in the chat here, as he's on his road to redemption and all of a sudden. Um, now, it could also be his second chance because he didn't reject Order 66. He went along with it. This could be his second chance at, you know, he could be right there with Omega. The switch goes off. Now, all of a sudden, he's Clone X activated. And he's his orders are to kidnap the girl and take her back to Hemlock, maybe this is his moment when he's able to resist. So that truly would be his redemption. But I think mm. these clone X troopers have a lot to do with Crosshair's future. There's speculation that he that they're all derivative of him or clones of him. I don't know. I don't think so. Because if they were, I don't know that they would have tried to make him one of them. I don't know. I... It's I love the contrast between the fact that Crosshair was the only member of the Bad Batch who responded to Order 66 immediately. And he's also the only trooper that they experimented on that they, they couldn't make him one of the shadow operatives. Right. I, 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 there's something unique about him in that way. Also, a lot of people are speculating that there is a clone underneath this, uh, what do you call him, Agent X? Clone X. Clone X. There's there's underneath that mask, it's a, it's a clone we know. A lot of people are saying tech. It's tech. I don't the think second it's tech. one? The second one yeah, or the first? The second yeah. one who survived the waterfall. Okay. That, that's people are saying tech. it's tech. That they got tech. But... He's not wearing glasses, all right? I don't know yeah. if the reprogramming is also like LASIK eye surgery is included. <laughs> but he's not wearing the goggles, which he needed, or the glasses, what have you. 
and also with Crosshair, revealing that they couldn't condition him to be a shadow, then I think that's going to be consistent with all the Bad Batch. Mm, okay, yeah. There's something about their modification that prevents future modification or reconditioning. So I don't think it's tech. My candidate for who's under this mask, if it's someone we do indeed know, Commander Cody disappeared. And I think it was season two. Oh. And mm -hmm. it was it was left so open that you had to speculate, what are they going to be doing with Cody? There's got to be something. And so I wouldn't be surprised if it's Commander Cody. Or it could wow. be nobody. I, I, I don't know. But hmm. that's that that's after Crosshair made that revelation, then I thought, well, that rules out tech. Yeah. Yeah. But Cody no, that is, is a high profile clone who disappeared. And where did he go? Probably Mount Tantus. Yeah. Yeah. And he was uh yeah, it's he was able to survive that fall because you at the end you see him, you know, crawling out there. And um, so he lives to fight another day. And yeah, well, pursue... it shows he can survive a big fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so maybe that's it is that. I don't know. <laughs> but two big falls? I, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, really. Like, what is he, the a big cat fall. with nine lives? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> right. This is the new saber to the gut, the big fall. The big you fall. Know, oh, it's you know, nothing, you know? I it's accept nothing. it quicker than I accept the saber through the gut. <laughs> Because, I mean, even Richard Kimball survived the waterfall, you know. Yeah, right. God, even you know, Peter even Pan. Right Reynolds survived the waterfall in Deliverance, for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Just, uh, don't watch that, kids. Uh, just no, wait until you're much movie. older. Yeah, I great know. movie with one very disturbing scene. Well, there's, a, it's, there's a lot disturbing in that movie. I, I remember watching that one night. It was on TV, and even the edited TV version just creep me out but brilliant performances i mean a classic classic film hey did you catch the wilhelm scream you know i saw people talking about this online and i i don't know i i didn't maybe i'm just so accustomed to the wilhelm scream it, it doesn't even <laughs> jump out at me anymore but i got a uh, picture of the moment it's when the clone troopers were falling out of one of the one of the ships yeah it was really it was kind of buried, but it's real. It's obvious. It's obvious. So mm -hmm. that's the moment. It was the classic Wilhelm scream. So despite Matt Wood saying that Lucasfilm uh, uh, Skywalker sound is moving on from the classic Wilhelm scream and sort of finding their own, the classic Wilhelm scream is very well, clearly heard in this episode. It never retired. It's uh, It's been heard many times since Matt made that statement. And their feeble attempts to try to replace it is just laughable. <laughs> you cannot replace the Wilhelm scream. Stop trying. Oh, it's 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 way 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 too iconic. Um. So, by the way, for those of you who are new to this, uh, the Bad Batch After Show, it is a call-in show. We've got the number up on the screen: seven zero eight eight six six one seven three seven. Our call screener Tyler Page is uh, standing by. We're also monitoring the chats. Very active chat. Um. And we got some super chats here we want to, we'll be looking at here in, in just a moment. But, yeah, I wanted to get my crosshair theory out there. Uh, so perhaps you have your own crosshair theories about the hand, about the Clone X program. Uh, one thing is certain is that, because I was, I was asking myself, like, wow, there's just, like, the, the Clone X seems like the most blackest ops possible or, or or within the empire these are a step beyond death troopers i mean this is super secret stuff and and i'm like why why and why are they after omega i mean i know why the why hemlock wants omega but then i started to realize like oh yeah this whole project necromancer thing you know palpatine said that hemlock would have every tool in the toolbox at his disposal to make this happen. And part of making it happen is keeping it secret. So, I mean, this is like the Phantom Menace himself, his identity. This is like the Death Star. This is 
a huge, huge secret in Star Wars storytelling, and they, they actually have created a whole new class of clone troopers to see to its security and its secrecy. And what's also interesting is you get the sense with these Clone X guys that there's never more than one activated at the same time. You know, mm. it's like we joked a couple of weeks ago about Bond, you know, like, yeah, uh, if I'm captured, 008 will replace me. You know, and it always goes in like sequential order, you know. Um, Bond is just checking out because 006 uh, was, was killed in the last mission. So he's replacing Yeah, but him. he's just taking over the mission for James. He still is active in doing other things. And a 006 and a 007, they can collaborate on a mission and work it together. Oh, that's true. It, yeah, right. They, they, yes, in the they, case of the Imperial operatives, they... Um, it appears only one at a time as far as that goes. And I think the fear would be that if you have too many of them out in the field, they might get together and team up and try to overthrow the empire itself. They're that dangerous. Mm. That's how I, why I think oh, maybe wow. only one at a time can be activated. And if they're so secret, how come they have these bright lights on their helmets and on their backpack and stuff? I mean, that's kind of uh <laughs> hey, look, there he is. Wait, well, you, see you know the when the Imperial Shadow? Yeah, he's right there in the shadows. Yeah, this, I see him. This guy right look here. How dark all of these. It, this is these are like the darkest episodes. They are really bad, dark. Bad, yeah. Visually. Yeah. They are just it, it's so dark. Compare these episodes to something from season one or the Clone Wars, even. And the, the contrast is amazing. These are all done so much in the dark. Yeah, and it's it's actually it's getting on my nerves a little bit <laughs> to tell you the a little truth. bit. You know, it's it's kind of an annoying Hollywood trend that's been going on for the last five to seven years, you know, just with with just deep darks. And, um, you know, it's, it's I think Star Wars needs to pop a little more. However, I think it is kind of effective in this series, at least that in these episodes. But, yeah, very, yeah. Dark, very dark. Almost frustratingly so as a viewer. Yes, there there were times where I was really trying to bring up the the contrast, and I'll sit there and ride that or ride the brightness on my TV just so I can try to see it. Especially with these clones. I mean, not only do they look alike, not only do they all sound alike, but the names. You got a Hunter. You got a Hauser. You got a Gregor. You got a Wrecker. I mean, it's <laughs> it's hard. Hey, you uh, know, Gregor Wrecker wasn't there. Been, he was just uh, name checked. Just. Wrecker's been unusually quiet this season. We haven't really yeah. been having those great character moments with him where he's acting like a child with Omega or he's revealing yet another phobia that he might have, you know. <laughs> I don't like spiders. Right. Uh, whatever. Yeah. I know right, he doesn't right, like right. spiders, but I'm just making it up. I, I think there's been a, a, a muted Wrecker so far this season. I'm looking for Wrecker to have his big moment in the spotlight at some well, point. I, I, I have to think that that's because they're, and this is a good thing, I think they're just so focused on this story. His um, comic relief isn't really necessary at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's... Because it's, he does offer comic relief. Right. It's a it's a distraction. I mean, there were there was a really nice character moment that actually leads to reconciliation between Hauser and Crosshair, and it it comes with Crosshair sort of uh, being a little overprotective of, of Omega. Mm. Or she's perceiving he's being overprotective. I think he asks her about her new her new crossbow if 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 she has it and if she has the right ammo or something. And so there's a warmth between the two of them. And that Hauser sees that. He notices that and he pulls crosshair aside and says you're, you're different you're different than you were you know like with the kid you're different than you were on ryloth and so it's through the way he treats omega that he's starting to gain the trust of of others because you know mm. if, you, if someone's kind to a child uh, an elderly person or they're kind to animals typically you've got somebody of decent character there because they're good to the most vulnerable people mm. and um so anyway, I thought I this thought is that true. Was... Mm -hmm. This is true, and it's it's kind of become something that's be, become more commonplace in Star Wars. It's just the mere presence of 
another individual can bring out the best out of these characters. Look at Grogu in The Mandalorian. Very similar situation where the guy was really locked into a certain kind of lifestyle, and then he comes across Baby Yoda, and it lightens something up about him. It, it makes him understand maybe it there's a bigger picture he should be looking at. And I think Omega does something very similar. As a matter of fact, what I love is a great character moment uh, it went by real quick, but it was, it was probably my favorite moment in the first episode um, was when Crosshair and Omega are sitting in the back of the cockpit as they're flying to Teth and uh, they're both, chomping away at their uh toothpicks and oh, yeah, uh omega yeah. omega's almost sitting there like crosshair you know and uh it was so funny to see how she's mirroring him with the toothpick and how she takes on some of the persona and some of the skill of these troopers that she hangs out with so it's kind of a two-way street in that aspect right she brings out the best out of crosshair and then crosshair influences her in in a certain way and um we've seen her go through each clone with that last season it was tech where she really was connecting with him he was teaching her all kind of things um, she instantly connects with wrecker because he's like a big kid right and hunter has been a great father figure to her uh, she's even made connections with echo so it's great to see how and it's different with each clone too which really tells me how well developed these characters actually are they're not all carbon copies of each other right You're, yeah i love that the, that point about how she has spent she's had these little arcs in these times with each of each of the clones so that we can see how we don't know what the story is that's the thing that we started and that's the mystery from the beginning is what actually is her relationship to them. Uh, we we were there was a lot of speculation, but I don't think it's ever been confirmed other than the fact that she's she's a Gen One clone. She was unaltered, uh, but there are these defective clones. It was never said that there's any kind of um, anything beyond them all just being clones that connects them their friendship but we speculated around you know with season one oh she's showing that she uh has these abilities or proclivity towards these abilities and these skills like the like the bad batch but now as you're saying this i'm thinking it's more uh nurture versus nature i guess that's what i'm trying to say it's about her exposure to them her learning from them than any kind of like innate built in through the cloning process but it seemed like that's the direction they were going in season one, and they sort of dropped that. Does Omega is she in a like one of the first clones? I I believe so. She would be. I think she would be much older. Would it? No, I guess not. I no, because she's she's not I aging guess. at twice the rate. No, that's that's not what I mean. You know, it, it's hard to understand when the clone army initially started getting developed. It happened at some point between episode one and episode two. And there's a decade of time separating those two events. So when I, and then she, she should be about 14 or 15 years old. Right. At this point. Is, is, is that how old we're assuming her to be? I believe so. Yeah, that's yeah, what I think. I, so. I guess so. She seems a little younger than that. All right, they're saying people in the chat are saying Omega is the end. The name. Well, references. I guess yeah. If you want to think about yeah, the but I, I I don't think she was the she's not the very last clone that was cloned. I don't think that's I don't think exactly. that's the case. Exactly. So don't take it so literally. I don't think you can. Yeah. No, I don't think you can either. I don't think the timing matches up. No. Oh, and then so. somebody says Cerveza Cristal in the chat. Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time for a. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess <laughs> we just got Cerveza Cristal. Um, <laughs> uh, right, oh, drink them if you got them. All right. Um, 
let's get to some super chats here. Uh, so let's start with uh, Tanya. Tanya says, uh, many fans speculating the operative is tech. My money is on Cody. Where the heck is he? Well, Tanya, you and Jimmy Mack are both thinking alike here that that um, the operative is tech. I, I'm i going to go and say that my theory is that that operative Cody, is, that. I think the operative is nobody. That's my theory. I don't think All that, right. I think that, that they're going to keep that as the... Uh, as the trend, because so, so it's Ray from the Last Jedi. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Nobody. No, no it's it's not Ray. It's Ray's parents. <laughs> it, yeah. Her parents were nobodies. You know, some people uh, are saying that Omega could be Ray's mother. Did we talked about? That, yeah, we've we? talked. Yeah, we've talked yeah. about that. Yeah, I, I, I think it's hilarious when uh, <laughs> when I see that. But I mean, you know, you think of the possibilities. It's it's not outside of logic, but uh, I don't. Uh, here's he guy he guy says uh, cheers from kc i'm gonna miss the chat tonight while the big oh while the big 12 tournament but for star wars and college basketball i cheer the same go clones well thanks he guy i appreciate that nice of you to send a super chat even though you can't be here yeah sal b crumb too much focus on that assassin clone is it tech i hope not let that death still have meaning if nobody ever dies the stakes never feel high and it kills the drama I don't mm -hmm. disagree with that, Sal. I think that that's a problem. We saw that with all the sabers to the gut in the live action shows. Uh, no one's, they, they don't want to kill anybody off. I think they don't want to. Yeah. Well, I have my own theory, but uh, yeah, they, they certainly need to have these, these deaths need to have some integrity and some meaning behind it. And not everyone needs to be someone. <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, I think these, 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 these shadow operatives are really cool in themselves, even though they look very uncommon for the clone trooper gear they wear is very uncommon. It's almost like he's wearing a Lucador mask, like he's Nacho Libre or something. And um, it's, it's not your typical clone helmet. It's almost like uh, something you'd see like uh, in a DC comic book or something, you know, um, it's little GI Joe. A little G.I. Joe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Fortnite, maybe. My... Snake Eyes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I like I like my Troopers clone, Troopers, Storm Troopers, to have that, uh, although, that look. Although, look at, look at how you could say there's a little Vader-esque in the snout. Well, we've, we've seen that helmet designs with that similar shape in the very front of the mouth and the nose. Uh, we we've seen something similar to that, but um, overall, it like I said, it looks like you know something a, a wrestler from Mexico would wear. <laughs> Lucha way. Libre, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, some more super chats. We got my father Django. That's a great name. It says ten year fan. Thanks for all the entertainment. Oh man, that's very nice. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. It's it's our pleasure. It's a blast for us. Uh, Jeremy Lanning says, fellas, uh, I love you both. Thanks for having me on the Q&A. Need to catch up uh, on a Bad Batch or else I'd call in. So, uh, Jim, this sounds like a perfect opportunity to plug Q&A. Q&A. It's an exclusive show at RFR on Patreon. Patreon's a great website, patreon.com slash Rebel Force Radio. It's a place you can go and support RFR. The more you support, the more you get. We have exclusive podcasts. We have full show video. We have opportunities for you to host a podcast like Jeremy did recently with RFR Q&A. And uh, there's uh, other shows too, like RFR RPG, The Babu Freaks. And um, what else am I leaving out in Q&A? And uh, it's just a great time. And uh, we want you to join us, become part of the community because you'll find out it's a great community of Star Wars fans at rebelforceradio.com. Nope, I'm sorry. At You can go to rebelforceradio.com and click the links or just go directly to the source, your source for the force, patreon.com slash rebelforceradio. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for your support tonight. And as a Patreon member, here's David Fieldsend. He says, uh, RFR number one, my theory is Wolf gets arrested for letting Omega go, sent to Tantus, and broken with experiments and conditioning, 
is uh, rescued at the end. Yeah, so Wolf is one of the, the, the three clones that ends up on that, uh, on that fishing boat that we see. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah uh, Wolf, yeah, you can tell because he's got the, uh, the missing eye. That was uh, Saj Ventress, I believe, that took his eye, if I'm remembering Ouch. correctly. Um, so, yeah, so we know that Wolf lives to go and retire in peace. Uh, I guess not so much peace. He lives to retire with uh, Gregor and Rex, but the fates of the other clones, we don't know. But we definitely know these guys by the time of the Rebels series. I think I mm -hmm. failed to mention this is a shot from uh, Rebels. Well, so I believe old these man are Rex. Soul, I believe these three, Rex, Gregor, and Wolf, are the sole survivors of the clones from Camino. I believe these are the last three standing. The reason I think that is because it's clear that at this point in the timeline, the Bad Batch, Rex is, br he's bringing disenfranchised clones together and right. building something of a militia. He definitely has a, a whole system in place with these clones. So something's going to go terribly wrong mm. for Rex and the troopers who follow him because they're not around during the time of Star Wars Rebels. If they were, they would have been activated to join the Rebellion. I'm sure Rex would still have that sway. Now, true, they do go through that aging process where they double age, the, you know, the, the time um, mm -hmm. it takes, you know, they, they double time their age. That continues throughout their entire lifespans. It doesn't... I, there's 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 differing opinions on this. Some people say that yep. the aging gets normal once you reach maturity. But I don't know. Look at look at how these guys have aged by the time of Star Wars Rebels, which is a mere ten years in the future. Uh, Rex, Gregor, and Wolf look like they're in their mid sixties, and I don't think that the the aging process reverts to normal once you reach maturity does it slow down maybe a little bit i don't know yeah I, I i've seen those comments too and they always crack me up because the people behind them are always they're so certain they're right no, like they'll, come, they'll come after us you know i'll be like guys come <laughs> on everybody knows that once they hit a certain age it slows down and it's like what, what where was this <laughs> sorry, what 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 technical blueprint guidebook? Sorry, FJ, I know you love those. But what book did you read that in? I mean, this is not something mm. that's been stated. And, you know, I'm at the point where there's so much Star Wars now on screen and so much storytelling that's happening in live action and animation. It's like, just, if it doesn't happen there, and it's something that's, I think, that important, you know, sort of the fundamentals behind the aging of the clones, then I... I'm going to just continue to fill in the blanks on my own. I'm not going to necessarily, I mean, it's a good theory, but it's never posited. Hey, you know, my take is, or I read this once and it says this, it's always guys, <laughs> seriously. Moni G in the chat saying, uh, there were homeless clones on the streets in one of the live action shows. Yes. In an episode of Kenobi, but Kenobi takes place in the timeline prior to rebels. I'm saying, by the time we get to Star Wars Rebels, which is two to five years prior to the events of the original trilogy, then the clones have been mostly wiped out. And the only ones who are still in service or capable of being warriors are these three guys, Rex, Cody, and Gregor. That's just what I think. Jeff is saying accelerated growth is the way it was explained in Attack of the Clones. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and fact check, Jeff. I don't think so. I think they say age. And so what you, What are you saying, Jeff, that they're seven years old, but they're 200 pounds? Like, well, I mean, I mean, what is, I mean, growth. I mean, you, you don't ever stop growing. I mean, you, you reach maturity, but you still grow old from what I understand and from what I've been going through. <laughs> Jeff also <laughs> called me a dirty name in the chat. Jeff, oh, that's, you your, did? that's your first warning. 
What? That's your first warning. Yeah, you can't insult yeah. the host of this show. Only I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, I think I think Jeff insulted me because I insulted him because he's that guy that's going, guys, Jeff, guys. Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see more super chats here. We got to cleanse the palate from Jeff. Um, here's uh, oh, we already saw David. Uh, how about Leighton? Leighton says, uh, "Gotta love crosshair turning into helicopter dad." Yeah, a little bit. I mean, he's he's certainly made that transition and made it uh, pretty pretty quick but mm -hmm. doesn't she even say something like you're worse than hunter yeah and he's like you have no idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but i'm in i'm enjoying it you know i like uh i, I like that i like that relationship that kind of unconventional um but he's the anti-hero and i love anti-heroes Omega calls one of the batch. Oh, this is uh, from John Warren. Thanks, John, for the super chat. Omega calls one of the batch little brother in an earlier episode when they were treating her like a child. She was created before the the batch, at least. Yeah, yes, that. that is true. Yes, chronologically, yes, she was. They have confirmed that. So, and that becomes kind of a funny thing that they do. Uh, let's see what else before we open up the phones. Oh, we got a jammed switchboard. I'm looking over here. Tyler is busy. Oh, Our official time. call screener, uh, Tyler Page. Hey, Tyler, you're on candid camera, man. How you doing? Good, good. A lot of good calls tonight, man. They're okay. uh, they're ringing off the hook, so All keep right. it coming. Okay. They, they were great episodes, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. All right, buddy. We'll check in with you later. Thanks very much. Uh, how about we do it? Let's go with uh, Patreons first, folks. Patreons first. So let's start with uh, Marty. Marty in Georgia. Hey, Marty, you're on with Rebel Force Radio. Hey. Hello there. How are you guys doing? Hello there. Marty. Hey, just uh, love the clones as always. One of my favorite parts of Star Wars is the clones. And so getting to see all of them, definitely like seeing. I love Rex's look with the cloak on. I, I know it's kind of like, ooh, who's the guy in the cloak with the white and blue striped armor? <laughs> um, but it was a. Uh, it was cool to see him. I wanted to ask you guys, there was a moment when the Bad Batch were taken into the room where that clone X was being held, and Crosshair got one look at him. It's like, we need to leave. Like, he recognized hmm. him somehow, or what, I don't know it, what that was. Wasn't that, that because clone, he had he had yeah, the homing device inside of him? Uh, I, the internal homing I, device. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, but he just had this look of, I think, recognition almost, because they mm. already told him that they had a clone there. Right. I don't know, because that clone wasn't exactly distinctive looking to me. Um, so right. I don't know. I just want to get you guys' thoughts on that. Well, I'll tell you, I, I took it as just that, that he, he, he saw the guy and, you know, maybe it, it jogged a memory, not about the individual, but, oh, yeah, these guys – Oh, I just remembered they have an internal homing device. So he's being tracked. They know they know where we are and I know that they're coming. That's the way I took it. I don't know if, if Mac, if you had a different take. Well, no, I, I think his reaction was just from seeing the armor the guy was wearing and understanding what the the conditioning they went through, how dangerous this guy is and types like him are. And then, of course, yeah, the, the tracking device. Well, we mm -hmm. scanned him for trackers. Oh, no, Hemlock's smarter than you think. He's created trackers that are untraceable. Right. So we got to split because okay. reinforcements from the Empire are definitely on the way. And he was right. But it is, I mean. Okay, it, that makes sense. Yeah, it, Marty, I mean, your theory is possible. I mean, he might have, maybe he did look at this guy and think, oh, I remember this guy. This He's a, he's a bad, he's a bad, he's a bad hombre. Um, yeah. But but I do think it was, <laughs> I think it was the 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 tracker. But uh, anything else you want to okay. lay on us tonight? Um, let's see here. Definitely like the um, father daughter stuff with Crosshair and yeah. Omega. Just everything from the toothpick to <laughs> him looking out over her. That was there were just some good moments, and that still just cemented Crosshair as my favorite Bad Batcher. I'm I'm. I'm getting yeah. there. I'm getting there. The one thing that I didn't see, guys, is with the toothpick. I expected Hunter to give a look of suspicion and maybe disapproval 
Mm-hmm. You know, like, mm, I don't necessarily need huh. him to be an influence mm-hmm. on her. Um, I was waiting for that beat. It didn't happen. So I, I'm left to believe that they're cool with it. And it's just to show it's just to show the audience their connection. So well, and also he probably shows right. a lot of faith in Omega. You know, think well, right. you know, she's Omega. We raised her mm-hmm. essentially, and she won't be corrupted by Cross here, even though she has picked up one of his little ticks there with the uh, toothpick. I, I I think a lot of the mm-hmm. what you're saying, Jason, those thoughts were running through the character's mind as he was observing that. And it didn't really need to be telegraphed to us. Mm. I think by him looking back there, and it seemed like he took note of it. Yeah, right. He see he's seeing where this is going. Right. You know, she's she's becoming, she's falling under his influence, and so I mean that could be a threat to Hunter, or he can just be more of a glass half full kind of guy and say, well, you know, Cross here does have a lot to offer. You know, he's he's kind of a backstabber and. Uh, he betrayed us. Yeah, sure. But again, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And it looks like Crosshair is definitely completely separated from the Empire, disenfranchised like so many other clones mm-hmm. are. He has that great moment with Hauser when Hauser presses him about why he's changed. Mm-hmm. He says, I, I'm I'm expendable. They, it's right. loyalty to him. He said, loyalty means a lot to me. And for Crosshair, it was not a two-way street when it came to the way the Empire were, was treating the clones. And he, he saw the writing on the wall. One slip up, and he disappears just like Cody. It, and it happened. I mean, it happened to him. He ended up strapped down to a table on Mount Tantus. <laughs> right. That'll beat the loyalty out of anyone. Yeah. Yeah, he was talking about how the loyalty didn't go both ways with the Empire, whereas it it did with the Republic. And and Crosshair, I think, was one of those. He wasn't. Yes, he was loyal to the Empire by. Technically, but it wasn't. He was a loyalist to the Republic. He was a Republic soldier. The Republic evolved, or we could say, devolved into the Empire. But in Crosshair's mind, his loyalty stayed consistent. Everyone else changed. He stayed the same. But then he realized that this was the Empire, and it was different, and that loyalty stopped going the other way. Super strong character development. I yeah. really enjoy it. And it's been some of the most effective character development in the Disney era of Star Wars. In Star Wars, maybe the entire history of Star Wars. We're seeing a lot of different dimensions to each one of these characters and taking note of how they evolve. That's good stuff. Yeah. Hey, Marty, what do you think about my theory that Crosshair could be a sleeper clone X soldier? Um, I think it's possible. I wouldn't rule anything out when it comes to, um, Hemlock and what he can do. Mm-hmm. I think he's a big unknown. Well, I've got another. So, I've got another I piece to my theory. What if the shaky hand is a side effect? Jimmy Mack got it right now. What if it's a side effect of the treatment that turns these guys into clone X's? But when they get turned on, the shaky hand goes away. Oh. So now Crosshair's got to decide. <laughs> oh, do I want to? Do I want to get my powers back and keep them, or do I want to? Do I want to resist this programming and get my That's second wild. chance? That's wild, especially considering Hemlock is Ooh. also always rubbing his hand, and he has the glove on the one hand. I'm drawing a parallel between the two, and um, that's interesting because maybe we'll see Hemlock. At some point, ooh, you know he's a sleeper agent himself. <laughs> you know, the switch right. and jump into battle, right? You know, because he does. It, it appears that you know, in this the the quest for scientific discovery, Hemlock doesn't appear to be a guy who wouldn't experiment on himself. You know, yeah, out of devotion to. Oh, he's totally mad. Yeah, he's totally mad. He's Dr. Yeah. Frankenstein. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, yeah. he's a nutcase. 
Yeah, yeah, that's he good. Is. That's good. That's <laughs> I like the theory. I don't know how possible it is, but I, I just love that you're throwing it out there because well, that's a wild one. I love the wild theories. <laughs> All right. I really do. Well, we love Marty. Thanks, Marty, for the support. And uh we'll talk to you again. Thank Appreciate you guys. it. Uh, all right, let's go to another Patreon here. We've got Leighton from Georgia. Hey, Leighton, you're on with RFR. Ooh, Leighton is Leighton to the phone right now. <laughs> Flip it up to his name. Hey, Leighton. Uh, Leighton is muted. That's all it is. Hey, you guys. Cha -cha. <laughs> hey, cha -cha, buddy. <laughs> That's good to talk to you guys. Love the show. Thank you. Um, good couple of episodes. And, uh, Wanted to throw a couple of quick theories. If there's time for the second one, it's it's kind of on the super crazy side. But uh, all right, this is the, the night for crazy one, you know, theories. The shaky, shaky hand. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Always. So um, Jimmy Mack had pointed out the tipping point episode in season two recently, and I watched that one again. Um, and the his handshakes almost seemed to start there after he escaped from that torture chamber he was having a lot of trouble holding the gun and also putting the key card into the uh, slot in the terminal he was uh he definitely seemed to have some shakes going on there hmm. but um i, I noticed it didn't uh, affect uh, his uh, sharp Jason. skills though and that's that's really when it seems to be coming up is when he fires a rifle and during that escape sequence he did shoot down a couple of troopers at one point and didn't experience any, at least noticeably any effect with his hand. He didn't look at his hand or anything like that, but you might be right. I mean, yeah, you know, definitely seems to have been worse. Yeah. Well, and Jason, I think was literally putting this theory out when I was talking to, uh, to Tyler. So we were uh, definitely great minds thinking alike here, I think, but uh, you know, that uh, con conditioning that he apparently underwent um i'm thinking you know what if uh, like jason was saying maybe it did take but maybe the shakes is that it didn't take quite enough so hemlock may try to activate him and he you know hopefully can can resist it and maybe that's his ultimate sacrifice moment or something but that, that, that yeah that's sort of definitely where my mind was going as well yeah like he needs some sort of a i don't think he's I don't, it doesn't feel like I, the rescue of Omega. I mean, yeah, she probably couldn't have escaped on her own, but th there were moments where I didn't know who was rescuing who, like Omega had this plan. She, you know, she knew that the kennel was, was the way out. She wasn't going to leave without Crosshair. And that just makes me feel like Crosshair still needs this moment. I feel like he still needs this, uh, in sacrifice, and I don't mean necessarily he's he's gonna sacrifice himself, you know, and and die or something. But I I, I still feel he needs something bigger than that escape with Omega, and that perhaps resisting this activation of being a clone X could be it. Could be it. I don't know. But um, what else you got for us, Layton? Yeah, you said you had a, you had something else. You had well, a real the really crazy wild one, theory. But Oh yeah, well, so that the the, the clone uh, assassin that they were fighting and that apparently survived at the end of the episode, um, you know, like maybe it's a clone that we know. I think you brought that up earlier. Maybe it's a clone of Crosshair because they showed an awful lot of uh, sniper rifle scopes and crack mm. shooting by that guy. Are we cloning clones? Is that a thing? Do we clone yeah. clones? Maybe. <laughs> Clone clones? <laughs> I mean, it, it's going to be, it's going to degrade. It's like taking a copy yeah. of a copy of a copy. Right, right. Yeah. Like when you make those cassette that dubs back in the 80s, yeah. it never sounded as good. <laughs> never. As the you dubbed it from. Yeah. Um, Boy, that would be something anyway, because, you know, they, that, they have that, that. Well, Leighton, they have that dramatic um, visor or the front face plate that, that goes up kind of like Iron Man. And um, wouldn't that be something if they're in a they're in a lockup, they're squaring up, and they're face to face, and all of a sudden he hits that button that comes up, and he's looking at himself, which I guess is not that weird for most clones. That happens a lot, but for Crosshair, it's weird. Um, he seems to be unique because he's oh, he's defective. But it's a cool theory, man. 
Thank you very much. I don't think it was that crazy either. I mean, it's not. I don't think it's I mean, that even crazy. the clones need time to 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 grow and mature. So if they made a clone of Crosshair, then they would have had to make it at least a decade ago for him to grow into maturity to become a soldier. Right. That's so, a lot of advanced planning. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but I, I think Leighton was was implying that the cloning happened when he was being he was being experimented on on Tantis. On Tantis. Mm, right. So and, and some people are saying his hand is shaking because of the torture and abuse he received on Tantis. I'm not aware of him being tortured nor abused. I mean, yes, experimented on. Right. But I don't think they physically beat him down or anything like that. I mean, when he tried to escape, yeah, but when he was strapped to that table, it was all in the name of science. Right. Right. He was a lab it's rat. not, you know, I mean, abuse, it, you can, yeah, of course, it's a, it's abusive. The guy is being tested on and, and everything, you know, and, and he doesn't desire that. So, but he's yes, not, he's, yeah, he's not thing. being taken into a room three times a day and being roughed up. You know what I mean? And like, torture, right, 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 right. Is the word that was used. To yeah. We have not seen any evidence of him being tortured. So, I, you know, it's all in the way people interpret things. Right. But when you really have to look at what's there to to apply any sort of rational analysis to where the story is going. And that's what I always strive to do when we're talking about these episodes. Super chat from John David. He says, nice to see Batcher become a full member of the Batch and Omega didn't leave her on Tantus. Remember when Sabine tried to ditch horse dog on Paradio? Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is the first episode I realized that Batcher is a female lurka hound. I did not, I did not, I did not oh, yeah. think that the name Batcher seems kind of masculine to me. And yeah. so, I mean, you know, that's I, right. I, I, I just was surprised that uh, the dog have, was. It was like a gender reveal for Batcher this week. On the, <laughs> on the big, Batch. big pink cloud of, of whatever, you know, and they, they blow things It's a girl. I, you bit into the cupcake and it was pink icing on the inside, whatever. The, there you go. Uh, all right. We've got another Patreon member here waiting patiently. Uh, we've got Scott from St. Louis. Scott. Uh, Scott St. Louis from Boston. Oh, Scott St. Louis from Boston. Okay, well, that was a, that's a confusing one. Scott, hello, Scott. Yeah, sorry for the confusion. Yes, I am uh, not from St. Louis. I'm from the Boston area, in New England, and uh, uh, looking forward to seeing <laughs> you guys up our way uh, in Bristol. Oh yeah. Oh, it's uh, a big deal. We're yeah, excited. For yeah, oh, can't wait. Yeah, well, we so, hope yeah, everyone we'll comes out to see us. We'll be in Bristol, Connecticut, at the. Hold on one second, Scott. I got a plug. I got, <laughs> you asked you for it, Scott. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. you triggered the plug. <laughs> <laughs> you triggered the plug. So you got to sit through it for a second. But we'll be in Bristol, Connecticut, at the at the uh, Rockwell Theater in downtown Bristol for May the fourth with a live RFR, followed by. Uh, the screening of the Empire Strikes Back. Plus, there's going to be lightsaber training and all kind of cool things, vendor tables and food trucks, and it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a Star Wars party, and we want you there with us. It'll be our first live RFR in front of an audience in two years. The last one was in Anaheim for the big uh, RFR rooftop bash. Well, this is going to be the RFR Bristol. May the 4th be with you, Bash. And it's going to be incredible. So uh, you can get more information. Tickets are available now. Click on the graphic at rebelforceradio.com, and it'll take you right to the Bristol website where you can get all the information and learn if you're traveling. Hotel rooms are available. So party with us. I think also something I haven't really mentioned is there is um, – I think there's plans for an after show meet and greet. So once the entire event is over and that'll be at a location to be determined in the Bristol area. So that's going to be a lot of fun too. You can find so. me. I'll be over in the corner asleep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it has happened. Somebody folks. go wake up happened. swank. <laughs> 
Okay, back to your call, Scott. Thanks for uh, thanks for waiting yes. through the, the plug. Well, that'll be wonderful because you guys will be able to see all of us New Englanders where everybody talks like Mig Mayfeld uh, from The Mandalorian. <laughs> right, Bill Burr. Character. Right. So, and just to remind you that it, just because someone's bald and sounds that way, they're not cosplaying. Uh, that's probably just a regular New Englander. But, oh, yeah. they're not all anyway, Meg's Mayfield uh, to- <laughs> cosplayers, yeah. Um, so um, I'm curious about the assassin, and uh, my first thought actually was that it quite possibly could have been a size Ventress, but I, I kind of lost interest in that. But I do have a Ventress theory that I just wanted to throw out. Mm, okay. Uh, we haven't the, seen her yet. She's in the trailer, so we know she's coming. Right. So we know she's coming. Right. Um, but my theory is that because she she did die in the, the novel, um, we know from Ahsoka season uh, season one that this uh, Night Sister resurrection is probably a thing. Right. Where they're taking the dead Night Sisters back to death. And right. And um, so I, I'm just thinking in terms of connective tissue that Asajj Ventress is probably going to be one of the first of the resurrected night sisters and will be a template for what we may see in uh, Ahsoka season two. So, oh, all right. Well, it. okay. But all right. So this was more of a theory about the Ahsoka series, not so much. What well, I missed the bad batch connection because well, you know, she's connect? coming. Yeah. So the bad batch, we know that Asajj is coming back the mm-hmm. bad batch, but we know that she died in the canon mm-hmm. so might we see something alluding to what this um night sister resurrection is and then when we get to um ahsoka it kind of makes a, a, a okay a straight line well all right there. well clear something up for me when it comes to the 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 chronology of the canon isn't the isn't sure. the concern that Asajj fans or fans of the of the of the tie-in material that they had was well if she's alive in the bad batch that violates the canon so she died in the book was a dark disciple something or yeah I think yeah dark disciple which canonically is before bad batch right yes correct okay the end of the Clone Wars so if she's going to be resurrected in Ahsoka uh, season two. That's long after Bad no, no, Batch. No, 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 no. Sorry. I, she would be resurrected somewhere be, it, prior to coming into Bad Batch, but it sets the precedent for a Oh, season I two, see. The so concept. Okay. We get. Okay. Yes. The concept of Night Sister Resurrection, which is the reason why Thrawn is bringing all the Night Sisters to Dathomir. Mm. Okay. The dead. I, I, but I think so. that's, I mean, I, I, I like that I want there to be, I want there to establish uh, some of these, these, these powers, you know, we, we've been, we were talking a couple of weeks ago about Palpatine's right. ability to, you know, literally possess the body of a clone, but it, it's Palpatine on the inside. It's his soul. Uh, it's his essence, his being all that, but it's. A different body we, we've just not seen that we just know that that's what palpatine is trying to do and we assume that he is somewhat successful at least by the time of rise of skywalker so yeah if if this is a way to sort of but i will say with the resurrection we kind of saw it with darth maul i mean he wasn't dead but he was what did they say in the princess bride uh nearly dead or mostly dead, or whatever. Mostly dead. <laughs> mostly dead. So, <laughs> I think um, it's a similar it's a similar idea. But I, I'm with you on you know there needing to be perhaps some sort of precedent set, and that would that would be cool. Maybe that is how we get Asajj and, back. Yeah. Good theory. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate so it. Anything else hope. you want to throw hey, on us? I do. Um, it's uh, we're coming up. I just an early shout out to Jimmy Mack. Uh, a happy birthday coming up. Um, you're, you'll be halfway. Oh, you're embarrassing him! So congratulations. <laughs> you're you're embarrassing him. He doesn't he doesn't he doesn't want to acknowledge it. 
He's a, he's a very shy man. He's, he's he doesn't like to talk well, about himself yeah, or his birthday. birthday. What's a birthday? <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, happy birthday, Jimmy Mac. Looking Thank forward you. to seeing you all in Bristol. All right. Thank cool. You guys. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. We'll see you uh, on May the 4th. Uh, let's see. Wow. A lot of great theories. So the number is still the, we've got a few sl uh, slots open for your call. 708-866-1737. A lot of really great theories. Uh, we had some people asking, where's Blake? Is he all right? Um, I, I, he you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> is he safe? <laughs> uh, I think he's fine. Um, but you know, he's a kid and, uh, kids have all kinds of, I think he's a very active kid. He's involved in sports and things. So, uh, who knows what Blake's got going on? Maybe he's in the spelling bee. Who knows? Uh, he's a smart kid. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm if, if we hear from him good. every week when he calls, it's not, nah, it's always special when Blake calls. <laughs> what am I talking about? Uh, all right, let's go to Owen from New Mexico. Hello, hey. Owen. Hey, chat chat, boys. Chat chat. Chat chat. Uh, so, I me, I'm the only person in my family that really listens to Raw Force Radio, and so once they uh, once they played that Wilhelm scream, I was yeah. like a huge smile went on my face. Yeah, and I like looked around, but nobody noticed it, and it was pretty sad. So, oh, I, wanted... <laughs> yeah, I get the family on board, yeah. so they could be as cool <laughs> as you are. Did you did you stand up and say, you know what, you all suck? <laughs> All of you. <laughs> well, let's, you don't have to go that far. <laughs> All right. So you yeah, saw the, but, you heard the uh, well home scream and you and you and you loved it. I did too. It's I can't nice. believe I missed it. What's the matter with me? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to. Uh, I had a little theory about wolf. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it's pretty similar to the one that David had in the super chat. But basically, so remember when Rex is like, do the right thing, Wolf. So then Wolf Wolf goes back to the Empire, and they're like, why did you let them go? And he goes, I did the right thing. And then, um, so he gets arrested, but then he starts like trying to help the uh, Rex and the crew break out all the clones from Tantus from the inside out. Oh, and, uh, okay. Or he... Or or he just tries to escape, um, mm -hmm. and then helps them and joins the crew from there. So okay, well they're going to need somebody on the inside. I like that. I like that. I mean, it makes me wonder who else are, who else are they going to find on the inside? Will we see other cameos, uh, clomios, uh, where these clones come back? <laughs> you know these these name drop clones that we've heard of. Is there? Uh, Jim brought up uh, Cody. Is there anyone else that sort of if you, if you in the chat know, is there are there any other clones that are sort of out there lingering? And it's like, oh, whatever happened to to this guy? Because um, Kitster. Hey, um, <laughs> the thing is, is is we're all assuming that Commander Wolf is going to return to the Empire. It appeared that all of his troops were clone troopers themselves, and they all started reacting when talk about clones being held captive on Mount Tantus was revealed and they all sort of, you know, they all sort of like straightened up a little bit when that mm. info was dropped. So it's very possible that Cody and these clones might go rogue themselves and never return to the empire upon hearing that news. They're going to go on the lamb. They might, or, you know, they, they, they could try to find some information from the inside and completely mm. cover up the fact that they even came within proximity of the Bad Batch. Why'd you let them go? Who said we let them go? We didn't even see those guys. Right. Ask anyone that was there. Well, uh, what about um, Scorch and Hero, those Republic commandos? Are they clones? Yes. They absolutely. are clones, too. Okay. Yes. Clone commandos. All right. So, the, yeah, they all might. They mm. all might turn on the Empire by just, you know, waking well, are, up. And, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say they are uh, clear. There's there's some dialogue about how not all of the clones 
are on our side. Um, trying to remember what the scene was. Yeah, not all the clones on Tantus are prisoners. Some are loyal to the Empire. And that's when they mm -hmm. talk about this division of clones trained as specialized operatives and um, initiated into a secret deep cover program. These are these clone exes. So that's the other danger that they have. They break into Tantus. And they don't know who's with them, who's against them. Um, but I don't know why. I just thought that Scorch and Hero were going to be or might be obstacles for Wolf in the rest of his regular CTs. Maybe that's just in my imagination. I wasn't seeing Scorch and Hero as necessarily being like one of them that would be like, yeah, hey, what's going on with this uh, being held captive stuff? It's experiments and all that. Well, maybe it's just now they're informed and they know what's up. And it's possible they might find the information, feed it to Rex, and eventually join him and his growing roster of clone troopers that are looking to fight back. Mm -hmm. All right. A couple more Super Chats. How about this from Chris? Chris says, love this week's dual episodes. I like that Wolf respected that the fallen clones and... I like that Wolf respected that the Fallen were clones. That's right. And uh, traitor or not, they were still brothers. That's right. There is a moment when uh, they're surprised to see that um, they're on th th that they're that they're actually going up against clones. And even a bigger surprise when he realizes that the clone is is Rex. Remember, he thought that Rex was dead. That he died uh, yes. right there in the with Ahsoka Tano. Right, right. That was definitely a call back to the final Clone Wars episode. He thought Rex died in a Star Destroyer crash. Yeah. It doesn't say Rex, doesn't he say something like? He says, I thought you were dead. And the guy goes, well, he's like, you know, I thought you died in a Star Destroyer crash. And he goes, uh, part of me did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold Maybe on, I'm, gotta... I'm creating my own dialogue here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, I, I got it. I, I got it right here. Uh, rather, yeah, they're in prison. Hey, drop your blasters now. Oh, uh, where where you are you finding these transcripts of the episodes? I'll send you a link. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Well, that's that's a handy little tool there. Yeah, it's very. And nice. We're not going to share with everyone else. No, <laughs> Mike's going to send it to me, and I'm not going to share with. I am. I'll I'll look for that line, but. Uh, Another super chat here. This is uh, JJ says, as a parent, I really feel for Hunter. Omega is now looking up to Crosshair, and Crosshair mm -hmm. is protecting her. Love the, do love the new dynamic in the after shows. Oh, yeah, I feel for him, too, but it it's great drama. It's great drama, which is fun for us. You know, they're, they're brothers, so essentially he's the uncle. And doesn't That's everyone right. have kind of weird, eccentric uncles, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's just only natural. Yeah, I've seen the Who's Tommy. It's, uh, all right, Luke from <laughs> Luke from Florida. Uh, he has been waiting, and he is a Patreon. Hello, Luke. You're on with Rebel Force Radio. See what happened hey, is, guys. yeah, we J Luke, you just leapfrogged David and Andrew, who are on hold because you are a Patreon member. Sweet. So, sorry, David, and sorry, uh, Andrew. We'll get to you, but Patreons come first. Yes. Right, suckers. I got there first. Sorry about that. Um, now, I, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope I hope the whole RFR community is doing well. Um, I wanted to call tonight and uh, specifically ask. I was getting really hard vibes of Crosshair himself from that Imperial clone agent that they sent after the guys all on that you know hidden clone base where they were at. And I wonder, and I was talking to Tyler about this, is that a strand cast, a clone of a clone? Is that Crosshair's clone? Did they, while they had Crosshair locked up, did they make clones of him because he said, I wouldn't follow the rules? I could, they couldn't make me follow the orders. So did they say, all right, well, we're not just going to keep forcing him to do this. Did they instead just take the genetics out of him and try to re-engineer it? And clone a clone of a clone, if that makes sense to you. Because they they wanted his 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 skills, his, his skills, his unique per personal. But but they would need to modify it to make him 
follow orders. Correct. Hmm. I, I, I don't, just, want to poo- I don't want to I don't want to poo poo the theory. I just am so curious why everyone is so adamant that there's cloning of crosshair going on. Right. And, and I just I feel like I'm missing something. It doesn't work with the timeline because you need at least a decade to True. grow a mature clone. And also does the empire even have cloning technology? that's effective enough um they sure seem to need nala say for things and you know she's withholding information um and they don't know anything about the technology the empire has as far as creating a single successful clone much less one that can hold the blood of uh, that has significant m count so uh, you were saying well, that was what I was thinking, is is he doesn't have the problem with the M count thing that they're running into on Tantus, but Hemlock has specifically said to the other Imperials, send me all the used up clones you have. I have purposes for them. You know, right. I'll find something to do with them. Don't just decommission them. So so he is doing something with yeah. the clones. And Omega That's true. hinted that there's been some dialogue that has hinted at that. And this this specific imperial agent, as they called him, the clone that they dispatched to go after these guys, he broke the rules. He didn't follow protocol. Once he realized that Omega was there, he didn't take out the target. He reported back in. And it just seemed like he was enough like Crosshair, but he was a little more obedient. So I, I do agree with you. The timeline thing as far as what we know about genetically engineering and growing the clone to a certain age or to be that age, that's different. Um, so, so that was what, what was giving me those vibes and I couldn't really place it. Is it, is it a strand cast of tech? Is it a strand cast of crosshair or is it just a regular clone? Is it one of the regs that they just took off his, his CT number and took that away and hid that? I know we've, Um, we've talked about this, the definition of, of, strand cast before and it, it, it did we settle on that it was a clone of a clone no or is it just mm, another name for a clone i think oh, it's, it's just a, another way of saying clone no it's not a clone is a straight up copy a strand cast is something that i think combined modified different mm. dna mm, i see like they <clears throat> yeah so that's what that's what made me think cross, they modified crosshairs dna into what we as Star Wars fans know as, quote-unquote, a strand cast. That term has been used a few times. Mm-hmm. So that's why I thought that. My other my other quick thing, and I'll jump off the line in case anybody else wants to get on, the guys I, I leave frog. Give me, Mac, <laughs> who's your favorite Bad Batch character? And who is your favorite Star Wars character this week? Thank you, guys. <laughs> it changes daily, Luke. Um, yeah. But uh... my, my favorite character overall is uh, Huang. And uh, my favorite bad batcher is Cross Crosshair. Yeah, I'm gonna say Crosshair. Crosshair. I, he's he's kind of despicable and creepy, but I find the episodes that focus on him are some of the most compelling episodes of the Bad Batch overall. So, mm. I, I think he I think he is my favorite. Honorable mention to Wrecker, of course. <laughs> David uh, chimes in here on the chat and says, Strandcast is a genetic mix of multiple beings. And yeah. that, that yeah, that goes with what, uh, Mac, you were saying. So uh, created from an engineered template, says Maddie. So, okay, I got it. That's the difference. All right, uh, let's go to David from Boston. Hello, David. Hey, check, check, guys. Man, there's a lot of Davids tonight. And a Has lot of Boston. Been lo- there's been a lot of Davids? <laughs> Yeah, in the chat and everything else. So, uh, uh, well, you know, it's still I think all, a top. I think it's still a top called, ten name. And last time I called, I was in a rare electrical storm in New England. I could barely hear you, so I apologize if I talked over you. Oh well, there's a delay and, with with all of this, so you know, don't don't worry about it. It's just so, when you hear the host talking, you know, you just. Dial it back. Stop talking. <laughs> That's why so he says the same thing about being a dad. 
<laughs> at home, Jason says the same thing. <laughs> but we'll get out of the way and let you. You have the floor, David. So no apologies necessary. Just what um, what do you want to lay on us tonight? Well, first of all, Bristol, Connecticut. I'm an hour and 20 minutes away. Would you say May the 4th? Yeah, yes. May the 4th. We're there. Downtown I, Bristol. I'm there. Uh, just Sweet. let me know how to get the tickets. I'm there. Just go to rebelforceradio.com. Uh, All the information's there. Jason, love you. Love you representing the Sam Adams tonight. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the Sam Adams mug or the, yeah, yeah, the glass. Uh, it wasn't Sam Adams in there, then, but... I do like the glass. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, but it was that was the Oktoberfest, I believe. Wow! And uh, I love and, and you, Jimmy. I love all the Machiavellian theories tonight, especially oh, well, when it know. comes to you know everybody. I, I'm going to turn it to the light side here. I Omega is really becoming a character that I really like. There's something about her inherent kindness that I find very refreshing that I don't necessarily think we've seen in the star Wars character. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if part of that was the, the Nala says doing, and, and I imagine Nala say is the one that created Omega. And uh, secondly, the, the cinematography this year on the show has been amazing. And uh, I real quick, it, uh, Hemlock's turning into a great villain, and I'll leave it at this. You put hair on Wrecker, and he's not Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> See, this is a typical New Englander to be talking about Gronk. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, David, thanks very much. And, uh, David, I apologize. I just see now. I my eyes skimmed over it. You are a Patreon, ah, oh, and I let Ooh. that other guy skip you. Dang. I'm so sorry, but at least I got you before uh, Andrew. Andrew is not a Patreon, so I apologize. I did not credit you as that. My eyes were deceiving me. But thank you for that, and thanks for the great call. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. I think another super chat came in here. Uh, this is from Steel Diver. It says, how did Batcher get down the ladder? <laughs> you know what? Um, Great question. <laughs> he had these little jets that just popped out of his legs that we never knew he had, and he was able to fly around. That's that's, yeah. that's how he solved problems in Star Wars. Well, they had Wrecker, you know. He probably just said, yeah, jump on my back. You know, jeez, uh, <laughs> I, I, that's a great question. <laughs> Maybe he jumped. You Maybe guys. he worked the hound and survived <laughs> massive falls, and he landed right on his feet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got another call. Uh, this is Andrew. So, sorry, Andrew, if we made a a uh, an example of you. We don't we don't expect everybody to be Patreon supporters. Oh no, no, no worries. <laughs> none taken. None I mean, taken. we appreciate uh, it, is, uh, yeah, and- but. Anyway, what's on your mind? Uh, oh, I totally get it. Uh, this is Andrew Arkham from the Facebook group, and uh, I'm I really love the show, and this is my first time calling into it, so it's like it's like a huge honor for me. Uh, I've been listening for a long time. Uh, you know, Jimmy, I started listening because you were a guest on Swick, and I have followed you guys ever since then, and it's just amazing to be here with you guys right now. It's amazing uh, to be here with you. Is, and That's great. Swick is Star Wars in uh, character. No, I, They're nice guys who do yes, individual sir. episodes about Star Wars characters, and they have a big discussion about it. I was on the Admiral Akbar episode, if I remember correctly. And yeah, yeah, real nice guys. And I'll tell you what, they must have a good following because you're not the first person to say that you got turned on to RFR by me appearing on that show. So thanks a lot to uh, Swick, and, and thank you for uh, taking it a step further and finding rebel force radio absolutely absolutely uh, my question is and it's not because i'm just coming back from the bar you know with the sam allen sam allen's mugs i think it, you know what i'm talking about uh-huh. <laughs> but uh-huh. uh my question is uh when i was when i was watching the fight be, uh, between crosshair and the operative in the waterfalls it made me think about the fact that in return of the jedi a lot of those toys would go on to become 
parts of the toys used in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And mm. while I was watching that fight, it was giving me thoughts about how when Robin was fighting little John in the waterfall. And I wanted to ask if you guys thought that similarly as well, or am I just stretching at the idea? Mm. I- I'll tell you, I, it wasn't that long ago. I, 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 I revisited Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I, I, I showed it to, to my kids. And, um, yeah, we all enjoyed it. Um, it's not a movie. It's not one of those movies that I, uh, like go to, like I, 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 like references, like, you know, pop out. Um, so it it might just be, maybe I'm not a big enough fan of Robin. I love the movie, but I'm not a big enough fan of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. My mind here went to, I think somebody else mentioned it. Maybe Mac mentioned it, the, the fugitive, or he Peter Pan's right off the <laughs> right off the bridge, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's uh, that was me more than, uh, or that was what I was thinking of more than than Robin Hood. But hey, if it said Robin Hood to you, and you're absolutely right, it's it's a hoot to look at the history of that action figure line and how uh, you know the Gamorrean Guard was retooled into becoming Friar Tuck, and uh, <laughs> of course the Ewok Village was retooled to become Sherwood Forest, and some of the like. The little like the Ewok battle wagon, I think, and some of those uh, ended up also being part of that Robin Hood line. So, uh, yeah, and the, and they're yeah, a little the they're a little like cheaper the to get. Place, yeah, they're a little cheaper to get than the actual vintage Kenner Star Wars stuff. So you can kind of, you know, if you're a Lucy collector, you might be able to fake your way with some of those those toys. Yeah, totally. Uh, could I sneak away with two brief more questions? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, so one uh, is Chacha going to be replaced by Teresa Cristal? <laughs> well, I, you know what? I, it, it's it's I no because it's not uniquely RFR. You know, Cerveza Cristal belongs to everyone, but I will say it should be uniquely Star Wars. I don't like these other franchises glomming on to our Cerveza Cristal. Definitely not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> there, there are fans um, my, of your oh, rendition oh, of their yeah. jingle, too, by the way, Swank. Oh, is that I've right? <laughs> more than uh, a few people commenting over the last week. Boy, I loved it when Jason sang the jingle. <laughs> so much passion. <laughs> I send it to the last row. That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jimmy, your your rendition of it has been stuck in my head ever since the last episode where you brought attention to it. So Jim almost you. went into in this beautiful falsetto at one point when he was doing the like he took Cerveza Cristal up a couple octaves. Yeah, I, I was wearing too tight underpants. You put and, the in it. Very tight <laughs> underpants. I, I apologize. <laughs> All right, Andrew, you said you had one yeah, more, one okay. more thing. Uh yes, yeah, so um in uh in text final moments, mm. you see his legs get crushed. And then the last episode that we just saw this week, we see when Crosshair is looking at him, uh, at the operative th- with his heat vision, you see that he, the body is giving off heat, but the legs are blue and cold. And I wanted to ask how you guys felt about the idea that the operative is tech, but just, oh, you know, reworked. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Rewind the tape. Okay, what you're saying, yes, this sir. is this could be a great clue. So I don't remember Tex legs being crushed. Were they they were crushed well, before? He took that big fall. So people so may the, be so assuming, the, so the, so the assuming that is like, wouldn't everything be crushed? I mean, yeah. just not just his legs. I yeah. thought Andrew, no, you were saying in, in that episode. Okay, in that episode, the, the, they're on the tram. Mm-hmm. The cable snaps. The tram tilts to its side. You see the box fall on tech and it's just on him below the knees. And then this last episode, you see when they're, when Crosser is using his heat vision, he's looking at that operative Mm -hmm. and it's warm. It's yellow. It's orange. It's very predatorily except from the knees down. It's blue and very thin. Hmm. Uh, Have you ever seen anyone, uh, you know, through heat vision, goggles or whatever i mean maybe everyone has like blue legs if you look at them i i don't know I what don't to compare think, that to i don't i don't think i think andrew's on to something i i'm gonna go back and review <laughs> I it mean, like i gotta go back and review it but andrew this is a bright and orange but the yeah. legs 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I meant to say, like, you look at the arms, they're thicker, they're uh-huh. orange, they're giving out heat. But then you look at the legs part, and below the knees, assuming these are troops and they have training and they have, their muscle mass is as strong as their arms, that it should be as thick and bright, quote unquote, as the arms are. I don't know. I don't know shit about. Like, I don't know anything <laughs> about heat <laughs> vision. Well, yeah, I, 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 I do like I, I, I like I do look. I love the detective work. I love you know putting the clues together. Uh, Andrew, we'll, I'm going to review the tape uh, when this show wraps. I'm going to go take a look at that. I want to see Tech's final moments before the fall, and then look and see if we can find that that heat vision. But uh, hey, you've laid a lot of great stuff on us. Thank you. You're always welcome to call Patreon on or no. Uh, of course, we love Patreon, but you're always welcome to call. Thanks, Andrew. Great talking to you. Thank you. Such an honor. All right, buddy. Take care. <laughs> Great call. Oh, I, that's you know, that's I'm, a I'm wild one. To, yeah, that's I'm a willing, wild one. I'm willing to I mean, accept it. Well, I'm no expert on heat vision and what <laughs> people look like when being viewed with those goggles. Um, I can share with you, maybe you'll see this on screen, okay. um, just some stock imagery of bodies being viewed via heat vision. And uh, I, I put it up there, Jason. If, I, I think you might have to bring where, it on. Where is it? Um, it's, I, I shared uh, via Ecamm the, oh. Uh, oh, cool. the picture you might be able to see. Yeah, we, we've never really utilized I've this never done this before. Little, All right. uh, There's a first function. time for everything. So how do we do this? Uh, oh, you know what? I'll assign this to this and then i think we can pop over here no that's tyler. hey there's Get tyler here, tyler i want to see tyler via heat vision i want to see what that beard looks like oh look doug heater's on here let's that thing's radiating tyler show off your shirt oh yeah yeah you got got the, tyler's got the beard bat shirt on. <laughs> yeah thank you for that's this yeah. Shirt. yeah oh, I had but yeah, um yeah. So we'll just uh, stare at Tyler here. There we go. Minutes. Now I got it up. Okay. But as you can see, the core part of the bodies have that warmth to it. And then the bluish colors come in on the legs. Um, you know, I, other than knowing that this is stock photography, I, I don't know <laughs> where this illustration comes from or what sort of credentials it has, but yeah, you can see it's a bluish color on the legs of those people. Certainly on the they feet. Know. They got cold feet. Yeah. So, I mean, uh-huh. it's, it's, and, and it, I, I don't think your blood circulation in your legs compares to the upper part of your body just naturally. Um, that's why a lot of people have uh, issues with things like I, I, I varicose veins and stuff when they get older and, and poor blood circulation to their lower extremities. So hmm. I don't know if that definitely, if that necessitates like uh, some sort of cybernetics going on there in the star Wars galaxy, it most certainly could, but um, I don't know. That one just seemed like kind of a stretch, <laughs> but uh, I like it again. Th- no theory no analysis, no concept is beyond um, any comprehension for us here on RFR because we are talking about something that happened a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So Jim, there are no rules. I do have the quote. You're talking about the, uh, the the confrontation between Wolf and Rex at the end of the second episode. Yes. Uh, he says, uh, I, I thought you were dead. Is reports that you were killed in action, that you went down aboard an attack cruiser with Ahsoka Tano in the final season of the Clone Wars, now streaming on Disney Plus. So yeah, it was a little on the nose. I will tell you. <laughs> okay, in reality, it does stop at the that you went down aboard an attack cruiser. Yeah, uh, he says, "Oh, I did. I lost a lot of good men that day and today." So yeah, so it was. He was. It was like, yeah. Remember oh, this? Uh, <laughs> I I went down. Yeah, I lost a lot of men. Yeah, he didn't yeah. say anything like, "Yeah, you know, part of me died that day." <laughs> right. The, the, the scummy imperial part of me died that day. <laughs> yeah, he didn't say anything like that. All right, we got one more super chat here. This is Turtle War. Oh, Turtle War, so generous. My gosh, man. Uh, does anyone think we'll get a continuation of the cloned Zillow Beast story 
somewhere in the final nine episodes. Why oh, I forgot all about that. At the loose end. The yes, yes. Loose end. It was a loose end when the Clone Wars series ended. It, it it's been a loose end here. It was it was brought up on the Bad Batch? Uh, I, I don't remember if it was season one or two, but I think it was season two. And um, yes, um, they they made it known that the Empire has continued their research into the the Zillow Beast. And uh, wow, yeah, yeah. I I hope so. I hope this doesn't just like be a forever loose end. Every animated <laughs> series has a reference to the Zillow Beast, and we don't hear about it again. <laughs> we gotta, you know, we gotta have it. Man. You know, Dave Filoni scratching his Godzilla itch for every <laughs> series he produces. I'm surprised we didn't see a Zillow Beast in Ahsoka, but uh, no, that is Ooh, something that, that can be pursued here, is because now we're coming, we're approaching the back half of the season already. It's it's really oh, flown by, you know. You're right. This is really marks the the, the middle. Uh, so we're yeah, we'll be counting down. And in fact, that last episode just happens to be the week of May fourth. Yeah. So it's going to be a big week for us. We got after shows. We've got travel and Bristol and yeah, this is going to be a May fourth long remembered. Looking forward to it very much. Sure. Uh, we got one more super chat here. We'll get this in before we wrap. This is from Kid Vader twenty three. A uh, bad batch is the glue that keeps Star Wars lore together. It's not for everyone, but for those who drink from the fountain, no. Thumbs up. Yeah, I'm having a blast. I'm really having a good time with Bad Batch. Yes, for sure. I'm rec I'm recommending it to any Star Wars fan I talk to. You always get the pushback from the more casual fans who don't really feel comfortable delving into animation because they feel like it's going to be a, a kiddie show. But yeah. the Bad Batch is 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 just done a great job of being accessible to Star Wars fans, really of all ages. You have the young character in Omega, but nothing ever feels dumbed down. It feels like the stakes are very high, the drama is very high, the character development is exceptional, and the situations are really important to the development of the Empire and this this era of Star Wars, the Dark Time which is something that had always been very off limits for years and years. And um, I'm glad to see that uh, it's really being fully explored and in a very dramatic and uh, mature way. You know, it's not dumbed down. It's good quality Star Wars. And I'm happy to report that our pal FJ DeSanto was texting overnight last night as he was yeah. watching, he was catching up. He hadn't watched anything past episode three, I believe, and he binged it all last night and was like, like after every episode, he'd be like, Well, this is really good. And then yeah. next one, wow, this one episode this episode's really good too. And you know, so he kept he kept going on throughout the night. He was having a great he, time. He started self-flogging because he didn't figure out immediately what M count meant. Oh, and then <laughs> Then it, it struck him like a bolt of lightning. And he's right. like, oh, you're just so stupid for not, you know. <laughs> FJ's a super fan, so, you know. But he also is, his approach to Star Wars is 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 a very pure approach, I think. Yeah. And I've always appreciated that about FJ's fandom, especially for someone who is in the industry himself. He's a right. Hollywood insider himself. But yet he still has that ability to detach and completely use Star Wars as a source of escapist entertainment. And I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, I do too. His perspective is always fantastic to have. Your perspective is always great to have. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this week. What a fun time it was. Two episodes to talk to. We're now sitting here at just re having wrapped episode seven. We've got eight more to go. So I don't forget how many weeks that is, but it, it ends uh, May 4th. So there's there's another, I think, there's another week where there's two episodes that drop and maybe another week where three episodes drop. I can't remember. Maybe not. Maybe not another three uh, three part, but definitely another two part coming up uh, in the next. Yeah, I think we have seven more weeks. OK, in front Eight of episode seven Bad more weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's yeah. been a lot of fun tonight. No exception. Uh, Tyler Page. Our call screener, thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it as always. Uh, was there anything that uh, we didn't get to? Um, Had a lot well, of callers, we, a lot of super chats. A lot, a lot of good ones too. We did hear from Blake's people. 
and oh, uh, you know he, he's a little under the weather so oh, he'll return oh. when, when he's you know 100 percent. and i'm sure he'll talk about these episodes uh because hey, he's get well soon blake yeah, yeah get well buddy yeah reach um, out to him yeah well thank um, you for them to to reach out to us because yeah People were asking, how's Blake? Is Blake okay? So, <laughs> yeah. He's a staple. He is a um, staple. staple yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I I watched this episode with Barry last night, fellow Babu Freak Barry at his house, and it was great. Uh, I loved the uh, moment when Crosshair put his thermal detonator on the gun and shot it at the wall and it exploded. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the moment when uh, Omega, as the kids say, got, you know, she got her new blicky uh her new gun uh <laughs> and yeah. uh you know uh what else here uh yeah you know uh the shadow trooper says something like you know you made your choice uh you chose you know to align yourselves with the clones and i felt like if it was crosshair's choice he he would have stayed with the empire <laughs> uh i thought that was an interesting hmm. form of dialogue because like you know he he was aligned with them and he even says like his loyalty like it didn't go both ways right so right. his the choice was made for him not you mm. know not his right. choice he unless there's he, something we don't know i don't know if hmm. he just felt appreciated he would have stuck <laughs> around yeah but he i think he was fearing his future and i you know i think it's it's more than just being expendable though his core morality told him something was wrong with the empire when he saw how expendable those clones were at that snow base what was that planet we were there last week again um oh it's, it's from the episode tipping point yeah. a, a very aptly titled episode because that's where it all it all shifted for uh crosshair but i don't think it was necessarily crosshair feeling like he was expendable i i think he saw the big picture and realized all the clones are expendable and so he realized that uh, the shelf life is short for any clone trooper in the empire loyal or not and you know he's 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 being very pragmatic in this situation and then he took it a step uh, further and sealed his own fate when he killed his commanding officer thus he made a massive statement and that all happened in the episode tipping point which I, I recommend everybody go back and refresh yourself on because it, it is it, it explains the core of where Crosshair's character is mentally. All right, Ty, thanks so much, buddy. Yeah. Couldn't do it without you. Guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next week. But right now it is time for final thoughts from Jimmy Mack. Final thoughts, Jason, on infiltration and extraction. A, a couple of great episodes, uh, really great clone trooper stuff going on here. Great, great drama, great uh, character moments. Uh, it, it's up there with some of the best clone trooper character studies that have happened in Star Wars animation up to this point. Um, I really liked the ship that the uh, X trooper, what do we call him again? Um, Agent clone X. X. Clone X, I'll probably take the mask off. It'll be Elon Musk under there you know, <laughs> with the X. I right. hope not. God forbid. <laughs> but I really uh, dug the starship. They they only showed him briefly flying in to Teth and landing, but it was a cool as you know what ship. I really, I really dug that. Um, got this. Uh, got it right here. Here's the ship. Yeah, yeah. Look what a cool sleek ship that is. It looks like. Uh, one of those stealthy fighter you know, ships. Uh, that, it's very it's imperial. Amazing. That's that's what it looks. I mean, it's very even imperial. Though this is yeah, right like, at the beginning of the Im empire. It's very imperial. Kind of a cross between, uh, like, in the uh, rough draft for Star Wars, the Star Destroyers were actually one-man fighter ships. Uh, George just called them Star Destroyers, and. Um, when the comics adaptation came out several years ago from Dark Horse that illustrated George's rough draft, um, the, the Star Destroyers looked kind of like this ship, you know, just single one man, one man starships, uh, uh, starfighters that uh, had that arrowhead shape. 
Mm. So uh, that's kind of cool. Um, just really the way this episode ended with Rex telling Hunter that Omega is vital to the Mount Tantus operation. And this is just Rex, you know, summing it all up. This is him and you know his analysis of the whole situation is uh, why do they keep coming after Omega? She's vital to that Mount Tantus operation. So Hunter needs to find out why. So in essence, Rex is giving Hunter his next mission. And uh, I think we'll, we'll see them learn why. And we as an audience will learn why Omega is so vital to the Mount Tantus operation. Um, those experimentations that are going on there. She seems to be key to all of that. And um, Rex is spelling it out for Hunter. So Hunter is going to go on his next mission, which is going to be a quest for information. And we'll finally find out what makes Omega so dang important. I predict not next week, but the week after. Yes, that's that's one. <laughs> it's, it's a gut feeling. Um, <laughs> not next week, well, but the week after. Well, primarily because Lucasfilm PR barfed out the first half of the season to, you know, other outlets. Oh, they and, did, did they? Oh, yeah, they did that, that again this All year. Right. And so I, I think that's such a key piece of information. It would have been withheld from others, um, you know, because it would have been revealed. And this, like I said, this is a key piece of information. We've been waiting two and a half seasons to learn what Mega Omega's deal actually is. So um, don't try to distract me with with chats that just say Cerveza Crystal, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose Cerveza Crystal. Damn it! Damn it! You did it! Can I get through my final thoughts? Mm. It could be, you know, Moni says in the chat, it could be that Omega is strong with the Force. We've not seen really any indication of that. Maybe just a little tease here or there, but she's never actually outright tapped into the Force. Um, but maybe she is the one clone that has the capacity to learn the ways of the Force and to connect with the Force. And that's something we've been talking about since season one. So um, I think uh, that's something that definitely can be on the table. But I do think the uh, revelation about the mysteries of Omega will be will be revealed in a couple of weeks. And uh, that's uh, that's the quest, quest for information Rex is going to be going on starting next week. Do we know the title of next week's episode? Uh, um, it does exist. I don't have it in front yeah, of me. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, it, I, I meant to have that list in front of me as uh, we started this show um, because there might be a clue in that title. Um, I believe it's called, come on, come on internet uh here we go i got it i got it it's coming to these stupid ads jeez don't they know i'm trying to do a live stream here it's called bad territory and then Ooh. the next episode on march 27th is called the harbinger so um yeah you know i mean that's not just like you know slapping me in the face with any revelations about what those stories can be about episode 10 is called identity crisis now that might be that might have something to do with uh crosshair and him being a double agent like jason you suggested or it could be an episode about omega who has learned about what her purpose is in the big picture as a clone and uh, her struggling to deal with it i don't know those are just guesses on my my, my part uh, we'll see you next week what a great after show thank you everyone for joining us for the live stream i appreciate all the super chats i appreciate all the regular chats i love all the calls so very so crystal stop it you guys you gotta stop triggering me like that puff a pig not in this episode <laughs> all right well that will do it that will wrap up this week's show uh, as Max said, thanks everybody for all your support in the chat and the great conversation. We love it. Each and every week, we'll be back next week, not just with the Bad Batch After Show, but with the regular Rebel Force Radio weekly podcast. 
Uh, more Tyler Page, of course, coming up uh, next week in the Bad Batch After Show. We got a promise. And his beard will be here as well. So yes. uh, that'll do it. And for hopefully us. Blake. Hopefully and Blake. Hopefully Blake. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. we we'll... got him. He's 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 floating in a bacta tank as we <laughs> speak. Get well soon, Blake. I hope we feel you feel better. All right. Well, thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Love you all so much for Rebel Force Radio. I'm Jason. I'm Jimmy Mack. And remember, the Force will be with you always.